What are the effects of climate change on the well-being of people from infants to senior citizens? Most people, like sometimes people don't think about what can affect us, like that's really big, is weather. And it's inescapable. You have to go outside every day either to go to work, to go to school, any other activities. You can't just teleport there without stepping a foot outside so you should know what you're headed into. Also, it doesn't just affect infants or senior citizens or just middle-aged people. It affects everyone of all ages. For my claim, I said weather conditions and the environment can harm people of all ages through their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Richard Blanco from Looking for the Gulf Motel discusses his vacation spot when he was a young child with his family. He remembers exactly what it was like, the environment, how everything was, and was the beaches, the condos, and he can tie back those memories to now and he could talk about it forever because he remembers every single thing. And being a public speaker, author, and poet, he says, I want to blame the condos, their shadows ruining the beach, and my past. So he remembers everything and can just tie back those memories together, even in the future, he'll talk about them with other people. Also, Margaret Thatcher, from speech to the United Nations General Assembly, she's a political speaker that evaluates how the environment is threatened by people and the harsh weather impacts. And yes, like obviously the environment affects people, but it all moves in a cycle too. How we treat the environment can in return affect how it affects us and how it determines how we live our lives. And most people like are like don't treat the environment how it should be too. So we experience a lot of um, pollu like polluting issues with cars, a lot of like recycling issues. People should recycle more. People aren't taking care of the environment, so in return it harms us even more. Through a futuristic lens, relating back to Richard Blanco from Looking for the Gulf Motel, again, like he could attach his memories from when he was a child, how the environment was into the future. He probably remembers, oh yeah, it was probably sunny or cloudy on that day and what he did. Another example is, say something really tragic happened in someone's life in the past and it happened to be storming that day. So later in the future, when it could be raining, they could bring back those memories to them and they could get an upset feeling because it brings back the memories of what happened and all the tragedy that happened to them during that time. Through an environmental lens, too big of changes in the weather can affect one's mental health depending if it's too cold or too hot in the weather. And something that like some people like don't ever realize is that like people experience seasonal depression and even suicide rates increase during the warmer months and not the cold months, which this is surprising because you would think, oh yeah, it's not cold anymore, you can go outside, play with friends, maybe not any school anymore, more vacation time, less time off work. But as shown in this chart, around March and April, the, in the rate increases, then towards July and August, it starts to go down again towards getting towards the fall. And writers of the global warming will negatively impact human health, say that increased frequency and severity of heat waves will lead to more heat strokes and other heat-related illnesses and death. And this is probably because when you're outside in the heat, many people have to work outside during the summer because it's, again, like it's not too cold for you to work outside, it's good conditions, but sometimes it gets too hot and then they get overheated, could get more of a temper, could get more upset because they want to be inside around the air conditioning. Through a scientific lens, most people believe that the sun can benefit their health, which is very true because vitamin D can help a person help their health and everything, but there's also many negative effects too. For example, from the healthcare company of Unity Point Health, they examined that too much sun can damage the eyes, looking at it directly. As the sunlight hits the back of the eye, it hits the retina, in which the retina allows people to view visual images, and then it sends those images back to the brain so we can process them. Also, sunlight can result in like sunburns, skin cancer, and other brain damage as well. Just like in this picture, as the sun hits the back of the eye, then the retina on the back of the eye is damaged from too much UV light. Some might say that spending time outside can lower stress levels and increase well-being, which could be true depending on how much time you spend outside. If you spend an increased amount of time outside and take advantage of it, it could in return like affect you by the negative consequences. And also, as talked about earlier, there are many reasons why this, these outnumber the benefits as well. It's also easy to check their weather daily for a possible solution. You should know what you're going out into as you're leaving for work. You know if it's going to be rainy, you might need an umbrella or sun, you might need some sunscreen or even some even more 
pot like harmful effects to like depending on where you live there's gonna be like hurricane warnings or like even tornado ones and you should have a backup plan to what you're gonna be doing. Although some people just don't care and they're too lazy to check the weather and see what they're heading out into and then they risk the dangers for later that they'll regret. Also people can get involved in the environmental safety and there won't be as much destruction in the world and we can preserve the planet better by recycling more and turning off cars more, any like machines or vehicles and stuff like that. Although not enough people care about the environmental safety and this is why global warming is such a big issue today. Here's my work I did. Okay, a couple questions for you, Elizabeth. <clears throat> uh, the first one is, what information did you need before you began your research, and how did that information shape your research? I really need to know, like, a background of, like, the weather that I was talking about, like, different variety of sources, too, such as how it affects, like, your emotional health, physical, and your mental health, too. And I just use a variety of those from different sources because I know I need to tie it all together to bring it in. So it was really helpful that I knew some background stuff too about how it, like the sun can really affect us in harmful ways, like your eyes and everything. And how I even like thought about like myself about how like different like weather, depending on what it is, can affect like your emotional state and how you can get like different mental illnesses from that too. Second one is, um, what advice would you have for other researchers who consider this topic? Um, I would say, again, have a good interest in it because, and like, know, like, know what you're talking about and stay strong on that point because there are like many other reasons to back up the counter arguments too, but then they should know like the harmful effects too that can really affect you as well. 